Hey guys, welcome to now David Zamaletta. My name is Serge. And in today's video, I just got done recording a video for you all that you've seen previously about me having some transmission issues with my Sprinter. And I'm still driving on the way home. So very quickly, I wanna let you know guys, uh, what other car repair videos are coming up uh, soon. So recently I've done an announcement where I was working on the Chrysler 300 um, Limited. It's a 2005 and I need to do a lot of things to it. Um, and basically um, I need to do a paint job and converting it to Chrysler 300 C look. Um, and there's some body work I gotta do. Uh, and also like, you know, that facelift, obviously, headlights, taillights, that type of thing. Um, but basically, currently, I'm not working on it. I've done a couple of videos with it. The vehicle is, uh, it's running fine. I mean, I'm stuck behind tractors here. Wow. I'm gonna move it along slowly. I don't know what they're doing. Fasten them first. One thing you don't want to do is when you're having transmission issues, you don't want to get stuck behind slow traffic and then it's going to get it back into limp mode or what have you. You want to make sure you maintain a constant speed that way when it's safe to do so, you can get off an exit or drive as much as possible till your fuel is about to go out so you can get closer to where you're going and then take an exit that way. You don't get stranded in the middle of the highway with nothing around you, like no shops, no stores, nothing. Um, and that would be really bad. So make sure, this is like a little little advice. Make sure when you're driving sprinters, special long hauls, you always wanna make sure you got a full tank of fuel. Don't try to just like run it till it's dry, you know? For several factors, because first of all, you don't wanna get off the highway that often. You wanna make sure that you try to go to your destination, go get your bathroom break, fuel get on the highway don't stop until you get to where you're going and try to not to shut your vehicle off uh, before you make it to your final destination which that advice is golden because literally just yesterday i had an issue with my range rover so the upcoming videos is going to be about the range rover um you might be thinking that what about the sprinter videos and that this and that um well i tried to just stick to sprinters and obviously I don't have enough content for sprinters because I'm not doing that much sprinter work. But I'm having two customers that's going, that's coming uh, to me from Florida. Funny that both from Florida, they got a, one of them is gonna tow his vehicle down here. And another one, I don't know what he's gonna do, but maybe tow it as well. But they are supposed to come here and I'm gonna be servicing their sprinters. But until then, until that happens, I don't want to just sit around and waiting around and not post anything. So I would like to post you guys videos of when I bought a 2006 Land Rover Range Rover Sport HSC for myself and my wife. It had overheating issues, which they did not state on an auction. I bought it cheap for 2,500 bucks. And I'm thinking, well, I know there's, it's to be expected. When you're getting a Land Rover Range Rover product, it's going to have issues. And same thing for Jaguar. Um, so yeah, it was overheating. And I fixed that overheating issue on the cheap, basically for like 20 bucks. Uh, literally, the only thing I needed was water. But it's a very intricate type of system. It's not like a sprinter van where you could just add some water and you're done with it. So the reason I feel that it's important to post this type of video because this could be helpful for any modern uh, age vehicles where you have to have a special tool to pump all the water inside of your radiator. I have that special tool, but I was basically stuck on the road. Like I needed to get home. And did I have a special tool with me? No, I did not. So there is a method that you could do that fixes it in nine minutes literally nine minutes and actually that's how long it's supposed to take not sooner it has to be nine minutes um but you always have to be, have to be prepared so what i want to do is i'm going to post a series of videos um for the range rover until i get until i start doing more work to the chrysler 300 
reason I'm sort of stopping to do the work, my wife is using a Chrysler 300, it's fine. We're able to drive it anywhere, it looks okay. Like, we got a car wash for it. And there is another project that I wanna start, but I have so much different things going on. So I'm thinking that I'm gonna take you guys' advice because I had some uh, messages on my channel and I wasn't sure whether I should just post print of it, you know, like videos and stuff, but I got plenty of them here on the channel. But you guys said just post a lot of, you know, car videos and something helpful and uh, I should stop creating all these different channels and I've listened. So I'm not going to feel bad anymore for posting videos that have not to do with sprinters. But initially, to be honest, this was not a sprinter channel. It, it ended up being a sprinter channel because the sprinter content dominates the content on the channel. As you notice, I have plenty of other content on there, including other cars. But basically, it's just going to be like a how-to show. Anything that goes wrong, automotive or something else, I was going to show how to fix it. Uh, not that I'm the best person to fix things, but this is life. I have to fix it. What am I going to do right now? Tow a, call a tow truck? Hey, my sprinter stopped shifting? Um, that's not an option. That's going to cost me to lose money. I don't want to lose money. But anyways, guys, very nice to talk to you all. See you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.